Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson Chapter 1 I remember everything about the night I first took the drug. The magic drug that changed me into Edward Hyde. I was a well-known doctor. One of the best in London. Many sick people came to me. And I helped them all. On this day I was just showing a young woman to the door. In her arms she held a baby. She looked up at me with tears in her eyes. Doctor, she began, I thank you. With all my heart. I was so afraid that my baby was not going to live. If only, if only one had some money. Do not think about paying me, I told her. Seeing your little girl smile is enough for me. See that she gets a lot of rest now. Thank you, she said again. And she went out. As I closed the door I noticed my butler, Poole. He had been watching me. You look tired, sir, he said. You should get some rest too. I looked at the clock. It had been a long day. You are right, Poole, I said. You may get dinner ready now. I need to eat. I have a long night before me. In my lab. Yes, sir, said Poole. He turned to go. But he turned back again. You do so much good, sir, he said. So much good. With that, he left. I shook my head. If he only knew, I thought. If he only knew that there is another side to me. A side that I hide. A side that is not good at all. I had to smile. Poole probably thought that I was working in my lab on some new medicine. Something that would help people. But that was far, far from the truth. That night, after dinner, I went to my lab. A fire was burning in the fireplace. It threw shadows of strange shapes against the wall. I could see the blood-red liquid in a glass by the table. My magic drug. It was almost ready. Next to the glass was a large pile of white powder. I had bought all I could from a nearby drugstore. It was the only thing I still needed for my experiment. No one had ever made a drug like this before. It was going to change me completely. I stared at it for a long time. There it was! A drug so strong that it could separate the good side of me and the bad side of me into two people. Think of it! The good side could go on working to make the world a better place. Never bothered by any wicked thoughts while the other side could be as bad as it liked. And there would be no good side to make it feel ashamed. I sat back. I remembered all the people who had made fun of me. Like my old friend Dr. Lanyon. Why, he had laughed out loud when I told him that each person is not really one person. But two. I remembered this and I smiled. Slowly I poured the white powder into the glass. The red liquid smoked and boiled. There! It was finished. I knew that I might die if I took the drug. But I had to know if it worked. I lifted the blood-red liquid to my lips and drank it down. I let out a cry. The pain! It burned through me like fire. My bones felt as if they were being broken to bits. I shook like a flag in the wind. I was sick. So sick I wanted to die. But suddenly the pain stopped. I began to feel something new. I felt younger and lighter. I felt that I could do anything. 
I turned and looked into the mirror. I saw before me a brand new person. I was a much smaller man than I had been. My coat sleeves hung way past the tips of my fingers. I looked like a young boy in his father's clothes. I was smaller, yes, and younger. And very strange looking. The hair on my head was thick and wild. My eyes were small. Small and mean. My nose was flat and my teeth were sharp and liked this new face. This, too, was me. The evil side of me. This was the part of me that, all these years, I felt I had to hide. And so I gave this new me a new name. Mr. Hyde. Mr. Edward Hyde. I walked around the room. Even my walk was different. Henry Jekyll was a big, tall man. He had a slow, heavy step. Edward Hyde's step was quicker, lighter. It had a strange swing to it, too. My new voice was the next thing I tried. It was a low, rough whisper. I sat down at my desk and took out paper and pen. I was surprised to find that my handwriting was the one thing about me that had not changed. And so I spent the evening. I got to know everything I could about Edward Hyde. At last I saw that morning was coming. Poole would be up soon. He would be waiting to make breakfast for Henry Jekyll. But I did not yet know if the magic drug would bring back the good doctor. Quickly I poured more white powder into another glass of the red L-I-Q-U-I-D. Once again I drank the smoking drink. And once again I felt the shack ing. The pain. The breaking of my bones. When, at last, the pain stopped, I looked into the mirror. There, looking back at me, was the kind face of Dr. Henry Jekyll. Chapter 2 The next day I saw many sick people. But my mind was not on them. I was thinking about Edward Hyde. He was real. And so I had to make a place for him in the world. In the afternoon I closed my office. I went out to the shops. I was looking. For clothes in a small size. Edward Hyde's size. As I shopped I wondered. Why was Hyde so much smaller and younger than Jekyll? And why wasn't Hyde as strong as Jekyll? Then it came to me. Most of my life, I had been very good. I had not used my bad side much. So it was not as big or as strong as my good side. At the shops I picked out fine clothes. Evening clothes. For the night was to belong to Edward Hyde. When I came back home, I called Paul and Amanda, my maid, into the living room. A man named Edward Hyde, I began, will visit this house often. I have given him the door keys. He is free to come and go as he likes. Treat him well. Do all that he wishes. Do you understand? Yes, sir, they both said. As Paul left the room, I saw his face. He looked puzzled. I had always lived alone. He did not understand this change. That night I asked my lawyer, Mr. Utterson, to visit me. Poole showed him into my sitting room. Hello, Jekyll, said Utterson. I am glad to see you. It has been a long time, you know. You are so busy with your work. Yes, utter son, I replied. I have so much to do. Please. Take a seat. I have asked you here to talk about my will. Your will? asked utter son. I believe it is in order. There are some changes I want to make, I told Utterson. 
I handed him a sheet of paper. Here is my new will. Utter son looked over the new will. If you die, he said slowly as he read the paper, you wish to leave everything to your friend Edward Hyde. He looked up at me. But, Jekyll, what can be the meaning of this? It also says here that if you are missing for three months, Edward Hyde is to get everything you own. Yes, utter son, I said. How to, but this is madness, exclaimed utter son. Madness. Who is this Hyde? I have never even heard you speak of him before. No. You have not, I answered. He is a new friend. A very close friend. A young man who means a lot to me. But, Henry, said Utter Son, this is so sudden. Is there some problem? Is this Hyde making you change your will? Not at all, I said. Utter Son was quiet. Then he said, as your lawyer, I cannot let you do this. But you have to, I replied. Very well, said Utterson. I will take what you have written. And if something happens to you, I will see that your will is carried out. But I will never approve of such a thing. Utterson left quickly. I watched him go. He was a good friend. And a good lawyer, too. Of course, he was right. It was madness. A madness that excited me as nothing had ever done before. When Utter Sun was gone, I went. To my lab. I got out the clothes I had bought that day. And then I made the drug. I swallowed every drop. The shaking came on me as before. It was horrible. Horrible! But at last it stopped. And again I had turned into Edward Hyde. I wasted no time. I changed into my new clothes. I took my cane. Then I headed out the back door of the lab and into the street. Oh! How free I felt! I walked down streets I had walked all my life. I saw people I knew well. But they had no idea who I was. The good doctor had been left behind. 30.001 At a corner I spotted a horse and carriage. Quickly I climbed in. Take me to Soho! I shouted to the driver. And hurry up about it. Yes, sir, answered the driver. He looked at me strangely. I saw that he had no liking for me. The carriage started rolling. Soho was a dark and dangerous part of London that I loved well. I had gone there before a few times as Henry Jekyll. But I was always afraid that someone would know me. But now that fear was gone. I was Edward Hyde. Going out for a night on the town. The carriage stopped. Here we are, sir, the driver said. So ho. I jumped out of the carriage. I threw a few coins onto the ground and laughed. You want your money? Then dig for it. And off I went into the night. Be what a time I had. I drank and drank. I got into fights. I could see in people's eyes that they were afraid of me. They backed off when I came near. This just excited me. I laughed in their scared faces. That last, places in Soho began to close. It was almost morning. But I was not ready to go to Jekyll's home. Not yet. A sign on a street caught my eye. Rooms for rent. I thought to myself, Hyde needs a home. Perhaps this might be the place, 
BBA I rang the bell under the sign. An old woman popped her head out a window above me. What do you want? she yelled. The rooms! I called. Let me see them. At this hour, she exclaimed. Good people are still in their beds so early in the morning. Now! I shouted. And be quick about it. In a minute the old woman came to the door. She looked me over. And then she said, yes. These rooms will do for the likes of you. She led me up the steps and opened a door. The rooms were small. The windows were dirty. But what did I care? I only wanted a place for Edward Hyde to sleep when he did not want to stay at Jekyll's home. I'll take the rooms, I said. Low, I gave the old woman the first month's rent. She grabbed the money. Your name, sir? she asked. I don't ask more of you than that. The name is Hyde, I said. Edward Hyde. I put the keys in my pocket. Then I turned and started back to Jekyll's house. It was morning now. London was waking up. Even though I had not slept, I wasn't tired. I felt good. I walked fast. I was thinking about the night I had just had. All of a sudden a child came around the corner. Out of my way! I yelled. I knocked into the child and down she. Fell. Did I stop then? No. I just walked right over her. The child screamed. I would have kept going. But I felt a strong hand grab me. I turned and saw an angry face. What is the meaning of this? A tall man said. He held me tight. Have you no feelings? You hurt this child. And yet you walk on. The man looked at me. Anger and hate showed in his face. I knew that face from somewhere. Who was this man? I could not remember. A crowd was growing around us. The child's father was there. He was holding the little girl in his arms. Someone sent for a doctor. The doctor came and bent over the crying. Child. Then the doctor looked at me and said, Who are you, sir? Edward Hyde is the name, I said. And what are you going to do to help this poor child, he asked. Nothing, I said. Nothing? said the tall man. That policeman over there will know how to take care of you. That's right. Jail is the place for you, shouted the child's father. Jail. The very thought of it froze me. I could not stand that. I see you mean to make trouble for me, I said. Never mind the police. What do you want? Name your price. One hundred pounds, said the tall man. One hundred pounds for the child's family. By now, all the people standing around the hurt child were angry. Some tried to hit and scratch me. They wanted to kill me. The three men pulled me away from the crowd. Of course, I don't have that kind of money with me, I explained when I was safe. What could I do? I could think of only one thing. I can get you a check, I said. Do the three men followed me to the door of my lab. I went in, shutting the door in their faces. I went straight to Henry Jekyll's desk and took out his checkbook. I wrote out a check. I smiled as I signed it in Henry Jekyll's name. In a few minutes I came out again. I handed them the check. The tall man looked at it hard. But, can it be true? he said. 
This check is signed by Dr. Henry Jekyll. My cousin, Gabriel Utterson, is his lawyer. Jekyll is a fine man. He would never write a check 